so, what weapons of war do you wade into battle with? Well, I got this lamp. A lamp? And a rock. Oh, yes, of course, the rock. Is the rock at least pointy? Oh, yes, very pointy. You see, the thing about rocks is you can toss them, and after you toss them, it creates a diversion so you can run into the bushes. I didn't grow up on Warhammer. Heck, I didn't really even knew it existed until I was painting miniatures for D&D &D in my late 30s. And while I love many of the new Warhammer models that are released these days, I don't have that nostalgic connection to the brand or the world or the lore. I grew up loving fantasy and sword and sorcery movies from the 80s with their simplistic yet endearing storylines, subpar acting, wonderful atmosphere, and beautiful practical effects. I also read a lot of Stephen King books as a kid and watched horror movies that undoubtedly left some psychological debris. I can't be the only one that watched the It miniseries on TV as a kid. Yeah, that'll mess you up. Fast forward from my bizarre childhood interest to when miniature painting and tabletop gaming entered my life, and it shouldn't come as a surprise that when I first laid my eyes on the game Kingdom Death, I knew I had found something that struck a chord. Which leads us to today, where I'm exceptionally excited to be working with Adam Poots, the creator of Kingdom Death, to lead you down the twisting, dark, macabre, and sometimes sticky world of Kingdom Death as we paint up one of their soon-to-be-released models in a truly atmospheric and dark style. This is the Kalenium Butcher, and as you can see by the mound of human torsos that he's perched upon, he's a bad guy. Kingdom Death is a game where you play as a survivor, not a hero. Sure, you gain power, abilities, and craft some extremely rad gear, but the monsters in the dark are truly deadly and will crush your skull like a grape if given the opportunity. Speaking of the dark, that is an important component to the world of Kingdom Death, and we're going to use that as inspiration for how we approach the painting of this miniature. In the world of Kingdom Death, there is no natural light. There is no sun. There is no electricity. The lanterns that survivors carry represent not only the way for them to physically make their way into the world of darkness, but also symbolize life and the hopes of creating some sort of civilization. So while much of the model we're painting today will be quite dark, with only the lanterns on it to light it, I need to be careful not to only use pure black in the black primer to represent the dark areas. By spraying some inks over the primed model to start, we're going to build some depth of tones. And I understand that this is pretty faint and hard to see. This will give us a much more interesting black and dark starting point for very little effort. Whenever I'm starting a paint job that has a very strong atmospheric influence with light and mood, I can really become overwhelmed about where to begin. The best way I've found to keep it manageable is to work from big to small. So I'm gonna start with the most impactful, obvious elements first. And once those are in place, decision-making on details and refinement will come much easier later. So survivors need to use the lanterns to make their way in the world. Unfortunately, they act like little beacons for the butcher to hunt them down, which honestly makes his job pretty easy. Then, after hacking survivors to bits with his massive cleavers, he collects the lanterns as trophies and uses the face skin of his victims to make cute little lampshades. If you're a fan of bad guys like me, how can you not like this guy? So after simply painting each of these lanterns pure white using my favorite Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White, I'm going to create a faded light that each of these lanterns would produce by diluting white ink and spraying that through an airbrush. Now any of the steps today that I'm using an airbrush could be done with either dry brushing or with just a big fat brush for application. Now if you do dry brush this light, make sure that your brush stroke starts at the lantern and sweeps away so you get more of a faded look of that white light like the airbrush achieves. Now I've painted a number of my Kingdom Death models over the years, certainly not all of them, and I've adapted and changed my approach in how I do the lighting and the lanterns in that time. Now we often get hung up on painting every model for a game or an army in the exact same style and colors. And we think that if we don't do that, then they're not gonna look good together. And from my personal experience, I can tell you that that's just not true. You'd be surprised on how differently you can paint different models from the same faction or game, and they still look like they belong together. 
If you put too many restrictions on yourself, painting can very quickly feel like it's work instead of fun. And that's the easiest way to burn yourself out on mini painting entirely. As I'm adding our first feeling of warmth to our lights, I'm not feeling rushed to get through this paint job because I don't have 50 more monsters to paint for this new vignette expansion. You see, in Kingdom Death, you don't have battles where you're fighting small trash monsters. No, every battle in Kingdom Death is an epic boss fight that will get you sweating. Here's a basic rundown. After you've tried to improve your settlement by crafting new gear, creating new shops, innovating on new primitive technologies, and making sure your townsfolk are reproducing, yeah, that's right, you have to make more babies because people will die. Like, really, really horrible deaths. And the only way you really lose at the campaign in Kingdom Death is if you run out of people. So commence the humping. Where was I? Oh yes, after you've completed that settlement phase, it's time to head out on a hunt. You need to seek out the things that are terrible and nasty in the darkness before they come knocking at your door. And every one of those fights is epic. It's stressful. It's crazy. Failure and victory walk on a razor's edge. And I often find that I struggle to explain how fun this really is to new players. But I'm going to try anyway. In one of my first campaigns, my friends and I were fighting our first monster, which is the dreaded white lion. And my friend struck a deadly blow to the white lion, completely severing its lion nutsack. The players around the table rejoiced. The white lion, now enraged, turned on the lady that recently made him a eunuch and bit her head clean off. There was uh, less rejoicing at this part. But we persevered, our last three survivors finishing off the lion, collected all the weapons and armor from our new headless companion, and returned to the village with a nutsack trophy, which I think we used in a soup. Now that we have our light sources established, as well as the glow that they would create, it's time to start digging into the details that will help define the miniature in the scene. I'll be using a lot of warm colors to highlight up a lot of the surfaces, edges, and details as we work our way around the model. Because this light has such a strong warm glow, that'll influence any surface it hits. As I'm working on this step, I start to feel like the model's looking a little monochromatic. So I'm going to add some other interesting warm colors around the piece to help us build out that depth of color. I do need to be careful on what colors I add, especially cold colors like creating a blue shoulder pad. But if I use harmonious colors to our scheme like rust tones and reds to build some bounce reflections, we add more interest to the piece as a whole while building up the three-dimensional volumes of each of our shapes. Now there's a bunch of fancy light science that goes into how this kind of thing works, but really I'm just trying to emulate this awesome butcher artwork from the rule book. And anything that I see on here that I think looks good, I'm gonna try to emulate on the piece. Looking through the rule book for inspiration reminds me that an artistic style and identity that's unique to a game really appeals to me, whether it's a video game, a tabletop game, or an RPG. And that's one thing Kingdom Death does so well. Its aesthetic is a point of priority, and it's everywhere. The packaging, the logo design, the art on the game cards and rule books, and most excitingly, the design of the miniatures. There's a lot of Eastern inspiration in the art style and in the miniatures for Kingdom Death. And while I'm personally not a big fan of anime, I really think that this style not only appeals to me, but it's really fun to paint. Also, as a nerd and a collector, I'm just a sucker for a game that makes a lot of unique individual character minis that I can sit down and paint in a pretty short period of time when I'm in the mood. And while I'm on the topic of minis here, I'm probably burying the lead, which is the quality of plastic minis that Kingdom Death produces. Now, they do have limited edition runs of unique characters in resin, but all the models in the core game and expansions are this crisp, on-sprue, high-quality plastic. I'm told by Adam that producing all their models in these multi-part plastic kits isn't cheap, and they'd make a lot more profit if they went with lower quality stuff that we see in a lot of board games. But I personally am much happier spending my money on any models, regardless of game or manufacturer, that push to give us the coolest looking things at the highest quality to paint, 
and play with. Now the model we're painting today does have a ton of detail and at some point you need to make the decision yourself on how much you're going to paint, how much detail you're going to bring in and how much you're going to allow to fade away into the background. I'm just going around and ensuring that every surface that's close to a lantern gets more attention. Just be sure to always be thinking of where the light from the closest lantern would hit that surface so you're highlighting the angle perpendicular to that ray of light. And I'm not really painting in any specific order here. I just want to sit down and have fun and paint. Now I do focus more around the head and torso region of the butcher because that's the main focus of the piece. But I find myself just spinning the model around, taking a look at where there seems to be some spots missing, more highlights needed to be added, and then I spin the model back around again so I don't get too bored painting any one section. I'm also not worrying about which exact paint color I use too much. How would a bone look under a warm light? I don't really know exactly, so I'm just gonna mix a khaki bone colored paint with a bit of a warm orange and highlight with that and it seems to be just good enough. The more time I spend worrying about picking the perfect color or having the exact perfect brush stroke in any area, the less fun I'm having. And when I find that I'm done having fun highlighting things, well, I'm just gonna be done. Oftentimes when I start to feel my momentum leave me, I ask myself, is there anything on this model that looks like I forgot to paint it? If not, well, I'm good with being done. All the torsos on the base of this model are a perfect example of something that can overwhelm you. Instead of spending time in each one, I'm just gonna wash the skinless faces with the burgundy color. Because we have already built in some highlights with our earlier steps, I wanna keep this wash thin enough to let that previous work do the heavy lifting for us. For most of us, the amount of hobbying time we have in a given week or month can be pretty small. So don't worry about finding efficiencies in ways to still get your models painted and look solid while saving some time. And while I'm fortunate enough to get more time to paint models because of the videos I create, I find that having time to actually play the games can be quite elusive. And that's why I can appreciate games that come with some flexibility. If I'm playing a cooperative game like Kingdom Death, I don't need to find a new opponent to play each session. I can spend the time with the friends I really enjoy gaming and hanging out with. Games that give you different options on how to play are pretty sweet too. For instance, you can play Kingdom Death completely solo by yourself and even online virtually. Maybe you just want to learn the rules by playing a session by yourself or you want a solo campaign to play in between the sessions with your friends. To me, it's pretty cool that I have some other options. And the model we're painting today is from what's called a vignette of death, which is kind of a self-contained story and game in a single box. So if I'm just having a game night and want to introduce my friends to this weird ass game, I can do that. Also within the vignette, there's different endings based on how you do. The only bummer is you still do need the core game to understand all the rules and all the tokens and everything in order to play these vignettes. So yes, you can play it as a one shot, but it still is going to cost you the $400 core game. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good about how the model is looking, but there are some areas that are falling a little flat. Areas especially that are in some of the darker sections of the model that don't have any definition to the details. So in order to build out that dimension, I'm going to bring in some minimal highlighting, this time with colder tones. Now technically, if there isn't a secondary cool bounce color coming from somewhere, this wouldn't happen, but it really gives us a nice contrast to the piece and without being too meticulous to all these shadowy areas. And because so much of the model is painted in very warm colors, this little bit of a cool gray doesn't need to pop out at us for it to bring in just a bit of harmony. Okay, fun little side story here. So I was working with Adam on coming up with creative ideas about today's video and how we could go about it, what things to share. And he was really honest about really not knowing how to go about it. He said at Kingdom Death, they haven't really done much promotion for their game. They've relied a lot on word of mouth. And he was honest about how they've been so busy and often overwhelmed with the mounds of work that they've made for themselves with all that they've promised to create from their Kickstarter success a number of years ago. He told me stories of all the delays they've had because of needing to bring on more staff and train them, delays because of COVID, issues after issues with manufacturers. I could tell this dude was under a lot of pressure. And even under all of that, it was so cool to see his eyes just light up when he talked about his game. We discussed game design, art direction, and about the passion the people on his team have for the world that they've created. 
Basically, I walked away just being justified with all the money I've spent on games and models from small creators over the years. All right, we're in the final stretch, and this is the part of the paint job where I overthink any tiny detail I want to add before I call it done. This is also the point where I most commonly try something stupid or new on the model, and it ends up looking worse. So let's see if I can avoid that today or not. I decide I want to punch the brightest points on our lanterns up just a bit more. So I scratch out some of these areas with pure white again. I then add just a few quick passes of fluorescent yellow over these newly painted white areas. This will bring them back in with warmth, but still make them much more vibrant and interesting as our sources of light. After deciding I needed to darken a few more areas and it didn't really change anything, I figure it's time to be done. So let's paint the base rim and call the Kalenium Butcher complete. You know, I think we live in the golden age of miniatures. Tabletop games, RPGs, and miniature war games are more popular than ever before. And because of that, we're seeing a wider variety of game systems, settings, and technology so our miniatures can look even better than ever. So if there's a certain aesthetic, setting, or type of game that you enjoy, there's probably a game out there that scratches that itch if you dig for it. So a game like Kingdom Death might appeal to you. It might not, and honestly, it's not important to me that you like the same things that I like. What's important to me is that you find a game that excites you, miniatures that excite you, so that you have your hobby time free to do what you love. A big thanks for hanging out with me today, whether you're painting along with me in the video or you're just hanging out and watching me do all the hard work. Either one is cool with me. And if you wanna support me in making more videos, could you hit the subscribe and like button for this video so others can find it and join us over here as well. And if you wanted to go that extra mile, there is the Patreon link down below there. So just a couple bucks, you can support me, you can get some cool perks and really goes a long way to ensure these videos continue to be made. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get back to my painting desk for a big project that needs even more work on it. Don't worry, soon I'll bring you into the loop in an upcoming video. But between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray and a lion nutsack. Slay that too.